with Vlogstube, this is Kim, aka Spartan Stitcher, back again with another weekly cross stitching update. Today is the 21st of December 2020. This is video number 100, and I have three pieces to show you that I worked on this week. So let's get right into it. Uh, Monday, after I uploaded my video, I kept working on uh, Modern Folk Embroidery's Four Seasons Style from 2018 to finish up this. Quaker motif down here. It was over 700 stitches in that one motif, uh, but I got it done on Monday. So that concludes my uh, goal of getting that section done this year. So I have the blinds closed and it still washes out the color. This is 28 Count Monaco that I rip dyed with Royal Blue using DMC Acru Floss, and that is a quarter of the design done. The next piece I worked on is Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. Um, last month I finished up the last page of row two, so I am now on row three down here page nine. Uh, now I've been telling you I'm trying to do this piece spaced out over the four years that we'll be stationed here in North Dakota uh, to represent our time here. Um, because of my husband being selected uh, to be promoted to lieutenant colonel probably which will happen um, end of July beginning of August he'll actually pin on lieutenant colonel. Um, so that might mean that we move at the three-year mark instead of the four-year mark possibly there's i mean flexibility is the key to air power so we just got to be ready for anything so i did this last page in two months instead of three months and um i was on a roll this past week on this so i also did another half a page instead of a third of a page um to get this page done in two months I don't promise to keep doing that, but I'd rather get ahead of myself now. And if we don't move this next fall, then I can slow up on it um, rather than have to um, go, you know, bonkers on it once we get orders. Because they normally give us orders um, between two and four months before a move. So I don't want to be cramming in pages in that time and also getting ready for a move. So I, if I can get a little ahead of myself, I'm going to. So there is the entire piece. This is one over one on 28 count uh, mushroom even weave by MCG Textiles. Stitched in DMC 3808. I'll get a close up of what I did. So I continued this border all the way down because I can do that now without looking at the pattern. And then um, instead of going by motif, I just went by the half page as I had my working copy folded up um, and secured to my fabric. So I just did half the page. That was um, over 2,000 stitches for the border and the half page over three days. Lots of little tiny stitches. And then I have also been working on uh, Kindred Spirits by Jody Bergsma. And here in December, I started on this page right here, uh, the first page of row three. This week, I have done 2,410 stitches. And for the month, I believe I'm around 4,310 stitches on this page. Um, a lot of it is in that white that you cannot see, but I have 14 colors left, unless there's some ninja stitches that I, I've missed, but um, I can't really say here's the whole piece so far because it's all rolled up, but let's get in close. You can kind of see where the white stitches are because the lines are, are faded in that area, and I'm just filling in everything else. So 2,400 stitches since the last time you saw it. Um, hopefully in the next, like today, tomorrow, or Wednesday, I can finish up the page on that one and I'll be done with my 2020 goal on that. 
So the plans for the week, besides working on that, on Wednesday, the last block of the 52 weeks of peppermint or 52 weeks of blackwork sale by peppermint purple is released, and I have the entire row. Um, I think it's a five block row to do. So either Wednesday or Thursday, I'll do that and get um, that entire piece finished. And then after that, that's all my 2020 goals complete. Um, and Wednesday or Thursday, so. We're talking the 23rd or 24th of December, and that gives me like a whole week to figure something to work on. My first idea is to pull out my smallest piece and see if I can get a finish. This is Witches by Oberlin Samplers. Uh, I started this in August, October, excuse me, um, for the Out of the Stash at Last. So I worked on it a little bit every day for a week, and I got just about half the design done. Um, I'm, this is, uh, I believe it's 28 count, uh, Eek by Picture This Plus is the fabric. So over, you know, half the word is done, and so I got to do half the big word and then the border words on the top and bottom that are just backstitch. Um, so I can definitely get that done for another finish. For the end of the year. Uh, what I work on after that, I have no idea. Some of the some of my full coverage pieces I cannot work on before January because of my goal and what I'm using them for in 2021. But um, for example, Old Baby is going to be used for the 21 and 21 and it's already got less than, than the required amount of tents which is on it so I'm not going to work on that ahead of time. And Friends Forever and Museum Shelf are both going to be used for my stitching around Iceland. Um, so I can't work on those ahead of time. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to work on once I finish Witches and my Page on Kindred Spirits and um, the Blackwork piece. But um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to make a video on Monday next week on the 28th because I am going to do a whip parade on New Year's Eve on Wednesday. So for sure you'll see a video from me on Wednesday. You may or may not see a video from me on Monday. Um, just depends. I mean, you'll see my page finish and I'm, I'm planning on do, you know showing my, my 2020 finishes as well. So you'll see it all anyways on Wednesday. Um, it's just a matter of cramming all my whips into my recording. Um, that's limited to like 32 minutes without editing. So that is all my stitching content. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays to everybody. Um, be as, as joyful and appreciative and, and enjoy it as much as you can. Um, my husband is working today and tomorrow, but then he's taking 11 days of leave. So he'll be off. My girls are out of school for the, their two week break. Um, which is another reason why I don't have Hopper here because my girls are in the house and they're, and they said, be quick, mom. Oh, okay. I'll be quick. Um, and yeah, so it'll be just be the four of us in the house enjoying some family time and, uh, you know, Santa comes and we'll see what else we can do. Uh, we're supposed to get a little bit of snow between now and then. Um, so hopefully we'll have a white Christmas. Though we're going to get some, some gnarly wind after the snow falls. So we're talking 50 mile an hour winds um, after the snow. And it could get really cold. So winter is coming. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's all for my stitching content. I'll see you in the whip parade. And then I'll see you in 2021. Uh, when it comes to Air Force stuff. Before I get into my Air Force story, I have to uh, talk a little bit about some comments I made in the last couple of videos concerning the B-52 that had to divert to the UK. Uh, they did make it back just fine, and it landed with the exact same problem, um, which, you know, both I and my husband agreed that the air crew told the maintenance just fix it good enough that we can get home. So while they had the exact same problem, 
They didn't have to shut down the engine this time. They didn't have to divert to like the east coast of the U.S. They were able to continue to fly the entire way because while it had the exact same problem, they were able to determine that the engine uh, disengaged from this other system so it wasn't going to harm it while the engine kept running and producing thrust. So they weren't limited as to their airspeed and, and you know what they could do. So they didn't, could keep the engine running and keep going and get home um, so that the maintainers in the UK could fly home and so the air crew would be home um, and can always you know fix the jet here at home station when you have everything that you need without having to send parts everywhere. So uh, everyone is back home and I think today is the last day of flying and then they, they don't fly until um, like I think they don't fly until the 4th of January scheduled. I don't know. <clears throat> so um, my comments when I was talking about how the air crew that diverted um, wasn't prepared. They didn't take extra clothes with them. They didn't take their phone. And I said that that's something that I would expect out of airmen and not out of captains. That wasn't a knock on um, enlisted troops. That was all based on their age and their time in service. It has nothing to do with their rank whatsoever. Um, I am not one of those people that thinks officers are, are uh, you know, above and beyond enlisted and that we're more important. That's bullshit. Um, just uh, being blunt, that's bullshit. Um, I'm a maintenance officer or was a maintenance officer. I worked right, like I, I was one of the, the um, type of officers that went out on the line or went in the back shops and enjoyed watching the enlisted guys and girls do their work. Um, I can't tell you how much, how many hours I spent out on the flight line or riding around with the, the pro supers and the, uh, expediters that are enlisted, just absorbing knowledge from them. They are the subject matter experts. They have all the information. I don't know Jack Diddley about jets or, um, you know, they're the ones that taught me 90% of what I know about aircraft maintenance. Um, other officers didn't teach me that much. They taught me how to brief you know, aircraft status to the colonel and, you know, stuff like that. When it comes to doing the actual job, it's the um, enlisted folks that know all that. Um, I maintain friendships with many enlisted uh, troops that worked for me. Um, and I have far more enlisted friends on Facebook than I have fellow officers. Um, I treasure and have been honored and appreciate my time of working with those enlisted troops far more than I enjoyed working with fellow officers. Um, <clears throat> because officers, some, some idiots can be any rank. People who are self-centered can be any rank. I have experience in both, both officer and enlisted. Um, but primarily it's, I miss being in the Air Force because I miss working with the enlisted guys. So when I was saying that I expected those kinds of mistakes to be made by airmen, it wasn't a dig against the enlisted guys. It was a dig against, um, they have four plus years in the Air Force and should know better. My last job in the Air Force was a detachment commander, which was like being a principal of a school. So I had brand new students brand new F-16 crew chiefs who had only been in the Air Force for six months. And so they had been through basic training and had the first um, part of their tech school where they worked on non-operative airplanes before they came to us at Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix. So we're the first time that they um, are working on operational airplanes that can get them hurt. They're away from their moms. They're away from their, you know, their childhood homes. Excuse me. And just like we did some stupid stuff after high school, whether you went to college or not, um, everybody has to have that, that learning period in their life. And when you enlist in the military at such a young age, it's expected that you're not going to be perfect. Yes, there are some, you know, high speed, low drag troops that um, you just 
aim them in a direction and they go and they don't need any help. But then there's also troops that, that need some help and they need to learn their life skills and how to live on their own. Um, so people make stupid mistakes. I made stupid mistakes in college, so that didn't affect me as an officer because by then, by the time I graduated Michigan State, I had learned better. So uh, I apologize if anyone took that to mean that I was digging against enlisted and I didn't respect them. They have them my utmost respect and um, they're the friendships that I treasure the most. So <clears throat> just wanted to clarify that because someone who is a military spouse did send me a message. Um, she understood what I meant, but she thought that um, what I was saying wasn't translating into civilian speak. So I wanted to clarify myself clarify what I meant. So, okay. Air Force story for this week. On December 15th, a U-2, which is a reconnaissance plane that flies at really high elevation, um, flew with an artificial intelligence as a co-pilot. And this artificial intelligence, or AI, has been named R2. So, those of you that are Star Wars, you know, fellow Star Wars geeks will, will uh, understand how cool that is because it's a single pilot that flew with an R2 unit. Um, so what happened is for the past couple years, Air Combat Command has been working in their U2 Federal Laboratory to um, train an AI to do specific, to execute specific tasks in flight that are normally done by the pilot. And so what they did in this mission is that they flew a simulated missile strike. So the U-2 is up there flying reconnaissance and there's a simulated missile launched at them. And um, what the pilot and the R-2 did is they shared the radar and split the tasks. So the pilot um, kept flying the plane and R2 was using the radar to look for the enemy launchers, where this these missile strikes came from. While the pilot maintained flying and was looking for enemy aircraft around him. So they were both using the radar and doing their own jobs. Just like if he had a co-pilot sitting next to him, like a human being, would be helping him with these tasks. Um, so they shared sensors and uh, the R2 also helped him navigate. And let's see, I'm going to read my notes. <clears throat> yeah, so. And this mission was just to, pro uh, to prove the technical capability and the ability for it to coordinate with a human to do these tasks. Um, <clears throat> so it was a very successful mission. And to our knowledge, it is the first time an AI has flown on a military aircraft. Now there are other um, smart algorithms that had been loaded on military aircraft before. Uh, one example is the F-16 has a uh, automated ground collision avoidance system, uh, similar to like backup sensors or um, things that you might have in your car where if it thinks you're gonna hit something, it puts on the brake so you don't actually hit it. So I know there's cars out there that'll do that. Or even um, like, I think there's some that, that will auto parallel park. Um, so what this does on the F-16 is uh, if something should happen to the pilot, because it's a single seat airplane, um, the this algorithm will ensure, like the pilot goes unconscious, the <coughs> algorithm will um, fly the airplane to uh, safe and level flight and maintain control until the pilot regains consciousness and is able to um, take control back of the airplane. So, but this is the first uh, artificial intelligence on the U-2. I will link the article below so you can see what a U-2 looks like since I don't have a picture for you here. Um, and you can read about R-2 as well. They did spell it a little bit differently than um, the shorthand for R-2-D-2, but still pretty cool on that front. A little bit of information about Hopper because I had some questions. In my last video, um, a lot of you are amazed at how smart he is, and <clears throat> the bigger parrots have about the intelligence of a five or six year old, but the emotional range of a toddler. So when you think about 
you know, my five-year-old is, she can, she can get her own food. She can get dressed. She can go to the bathroom by herself. She can, you know, do multiple tasks around the house all by herself. Um, but when you think about a toddler and how frustrated they can get at their inability to communicate, inability to get what they want, um, or, you know, things like that, they get, they get pissed pretty easy. Um, and they get upset. They might take things out on you. Like, even though I'm Hopper's favorite person, if he can't communicate with me, he might bite me to get my attention. Um, so owning, owning a bird like that is like having a perpetual young child that never gets older. So things to think about before you, um, welcome a bird into your family. Besides all the things around a normal house that are toxic to them, Teflon, um, perfumes and, and odors, uh, commercial cleaners, um, any kind of incense, air fresheners, you won't find any of that in my house. All my cookware is stainless steel or um, cast iron or like uh, baking stones. That's, that's everything. And even with a bacon, like we have a pizza stone, after every few years, you, ha you need to, um, you know, you clean, you return the baking stone to pristine condition by running the self-clean cycle on your oven. You cannot do that with a bird in the house. That will kill your bird. Um, so, <clears throat> and then other things, someone asked me what he eats every day. So in the evening, he eats a um, very healthy pellet. And in the mornings, he eats a, a variety of um, chopped up vegetables, whole vegetables, excuse me, and a grain mixture. The channel where I get all my, or most of all my uh, information on bird training, bird care, is uh, Bird Tricks. I will link them below. Excuse me. Um, they are a couple, Dave and Jamie, Dave, Dave and Jamie. Um, <clears throat> Dave is actually a magician or an illusionist uh, who works with birds in his act. And once he got married and Jamie started learning about birds and they've had birds for like 25 years. They've had uh, lots of experience. Plus they're teaching birds tricks, obviously for the magic show. And they have, you know, through, ex through experience working with other people who have owned burns, birds have come up with a, um, a system, positive reinforcement system, permission-based system, like I've shown you, um, where you're not forcing the bird to do anything. They, it is completely their choice and they're doing it for the treat. They get a reward. And um, if you want to go check out their channel, I know a lot of people watch their channel even though they don't own birds. Um, it's fascinating. They do train birds to uh, free flight. So they, they go out on, on flight trips um, and let their, their birds free flight, but they're all recall trained. So they can always call their birds back. Um, when they are working with new clients, they do um, recommend a certain GPS system that clips on to their tail feathers. So um, not only as a safeguard in case your bird can't make it back to you, like let's say they don't have the stamina or the wind is too strong and or they run into crows that are chasing them, whatever. If they can't make it back to you, you can locate them. But also, you can use the GPA, GPS data to track their flight so you know how fast they're going, how far they've flown, um, elevation, things like it's It's geek stuff. It's really interesting. And so you can track um, how they improve or, or, you know, any trouble, what they're having troubles with, things like that. So I will link their channel below. But um, their diet that they recommend... Uh, to be fed once a day is called, they call it their natural feeding system. It's a vegetable, uh, primarily chop, where, here's a picture, they actually have a cookbook um, with their recipes and some other recipes to um, help you, <coughs> uh, what's the word? What's the word? Help adjust your bird's diet to start eating uh, healthier foods, um, transition, 
that's the word I was looking for, to help transition your bird either to eating the pellets and to eating the chop. So um, I can't really show you too much in here because it is proprietary information. You can buy their cookbook uh, or you can, like the hard copy or you can buy it as a digital file. But they do have like a parrot food guide where um, you don't have to go exactly by their recipes. You can sub things in, but they have an example that you should always have like an, an orange vegetable. You should always have leafy greens um, to balance the nutrients that they're getting. So uh, there's just an example. Some of the things in the chop, and I make this about every three or four months, and I freeze it in week, um, week long portions and baggies, and then I can defrost it and put it in the fridge, and it'll last me a week. Um, with Hopper, his weight as it is, uh, you know, he's I've reduced his weight a lot in the last couple of years because he was on a seed diet. So as I tra transitioned him two pellets and to this chop, I can adjust what's what he's eating every morning. So he gets this chop, but I keep the grains separate. So if he needs a little bit more grains, if he's losing the weight too much, I can uh, put more grains in it and stir it up with the vegetables and he'll eat it better. Um, he'll eat all of it better, not because he likes the grains best. Um, you know, who doesn't like carbs, right? So some of the things that includes uh, mixed beans. Beans are the only things that, that get cooked uh, in these in these chops, unless you also add pasta. <sighs> squash, <coughs> excuse me, all different kinds of squash, acorn squash, butternut squash, uh, yellow squash, zucchini, carrots, um, kale, Swiss chard, turnips, um, beets is in his current one, so once it defrosts it turns everything red. Um, which then translates to sometimes his poop can be red. Fresh peas, broccoli, um, let's see, cauliflower, garbanzo beans, navy beans, uh, zucchini, cauliflower, I think I already said that, radishes, spinach. Um, and then the, the whole vegetables that I add because he eats, he likes them better in bigger chunks rather than little chunks is things like sugar snap peas and uh, the mini bell peppers. I'll cut like a mini bell pepper into two pieces and he'll hold it in his foot and, and just go chow away. So <clears throat> he is now in a much healthier weight. Um, and so he eats that in the morning and then gets the pellet at night and a couple of snacks throughout the day um, just because parrots are, are flock animals. So if my girls are snacking, he expects a snack too. Um, just because when you eat, they eat. So that is a little bit of information on Hopper. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I uh, hope you enjoy your holidays as much as you can as we're all waiting for, um, <clears throat> you know, COVID spikes to go down, vaccines to be distributed, and hopefully to get back to more normal in 2021. Yeah, that's it. I have nothing else in my notes. Uh, I will see you guys in my whip parade, if not before, on Monday. So, all right. We'll see you later, guys. Happy stitching.